Hey folks, thank you for taking some time for this morning's Five for Five. I'm standing here in the rear part of our worship center for a reason, and that reason is not because of the lighting or because of the sound. Neither of those are really great, to be honest, right now. The reason is because of the contrast, of the fact that I'm standing inside of a place of worship, and behind me you can see the world as it is. You know, these recent days have been troubling when we look in the, at the condition of our own nation there is so much unrest and there is so much anger and there is so much hostility and there is injustice and there is racism and there is apathy so many things are not going well for us right now you know it reminds me in the book of genesis chapter 6 in the days of noah that it actually says in verse 6 in that chapter that god was sorry that he had created man now there's probably a lot packed into that that uh, we don't quite understand uh, god's ways are always perfect but I think it shows the depth to which mankind had fallen early in the story of humanity and how God's heart was grieved by that. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, Nehemiah walks into the city of Jerusalem and uh, he sees the condition of his own city. And uh, that condition was not good. The city was torn down. It was burned down. The, 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 uh, the wall was, was demolished. And Nehemiah wept in brokenness for that city. Jesus would go into the city of Jerusalem in the, in the Gospels. And as he began to enter that city, he would look over the city of Jerusalem and he would weep for that city. And time after time, we see in scripture pictures of people who had a burden for the world in which God had placed them. And I think the question for us as believers today that we have to grapple with is whether or not we are adding to the issues of our country or whether or not we are helping to bring the solution. You know, when we look at the things that have dominated the headlines here recently, and we see everything that unfolded in Minneapolis with an officer who abused his power and, and, and for purposes that were incredibly unjust and horrific, ultimately brought the, the life of another human being to an end. And when we see all of the anger and the unrest and how that has played out in our nation, it reminds us that politics is not gonna solve this issue. It reminds us that better laws are not going to solve this issue. What it reminds us is that we as a nation, we as a community, we as people and we as a world have a sin issue. Tragically, inside the walls of the church, we have a sin issue. There is a reason that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, as has been said for so long, is the most segregated time in our nation. And the reason for that is because of sin. And it's not the way of Jesus, and it's not the way of his word. And when we look in Micah chapter 6, the question is asked, what does God require of us? And he says to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. That is what God is looking for. And it starts inside the body of Jesus. It starts in the body of Christ, in the church. I mean, there is no place inside the church for us to be racist, for us to be unjust, for us to turn a deaf ear to those who are suffering and to those who are hurting. And yes, I am a white person. This is the way God created me, and I cannot change that. But it gives me no reason to turn a deaf ear to those who are hurting in my community, in my life, in this country today. Man, I've got friends of a different color. I have friends in ministry of a different color. My kids have friends that we love dearly of a different color, and they would give their life like that in an instant for me. And yet we as believers, just because we don't understand, because we're not a different color ourselves, and we can't change that, if we're not careful, sometimes we turn the deaf ear, and sometimes we do nothing. And sometimes we don't pray and sometimes we accuse and sometimes we find ourselves if we're not careful contributing to the very problem that Jesus died for you know there's a place in Scripture in the book of Acts I want to read to you real quickly it's in chapter 17 it's just tucked away in there and yet I think it brings all of this this issue that has created so much turmoil in our nation today this issue of racism, I think it just flat puts it to rest, to be honest. It says in Acts chapter 17, Luke is writing, the, 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 the time here is in the midst of Paul's ministry, and he's speaking of what God has done. 
And he says that he made from one man, that would be Adam, every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. Let me be clear for us as believers that there is no place for injustice and there is no place for racism and there is no place for prejudice. And if we have an issue with someone because of their background or the color of their skin, we need to just go ahead and have the courage to blame God because he's the one who separated the nations to begin with. You know, it's not God's fault. There is no fault that all of us are image bearers of God. The first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, verse 27, we are told very clearly that God has created us in his image. And so what do we do about the issues of our day? We as believers are, so to speak, in the church, but behind us there's a world wondering whether or not we can make a difference. Maybe we need to do what Micah said and to start by doing justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Maybe we need to begin to do what it takes for us to see others as image bearers of God. Maybe we need to pray with a sense of brokenness and if we don't have it, to ask God to give us that sense of urgency to see reconciliation come to our city and our relationships and our state and our world. And if we don't have anything to say, through our lips, at work, in the neighborhood, with our friends, on social media, that's going to help the situation and glorify Jesus, then maybe the best thing we can do is just be quiet. These are interesting days. These are hard days. But the answer has always been Jesus. And you and I, Christian, have a beautiful opportunity to represent him as an ambassador in this city, in this world, in our relationships, to seek to put him on display and to demonstrate his love and to ultimately be able to expand his kingdom as we stand for the only message that will change anything, and that's the message of the gospel, that Jesus, God himself, came into a world that hated him. And he crossed racial lines and he crossed political lines and he crossed virtually any boundary you could imagine to ultimately give his life to save any of us who would come to him in humility, in repentance, and in faith. Man, pray for our city, but also let the change start in your relationships as you demonstrate the love of Christ to everybody around you. Have a great day.